Hi, it's Kristen here at UT Southwestern Medical Center. Thank you for joining us today for our chat with Dr. Vagafi, who is Chief of Surgical Transplantation here at UT Southwestern. We are just steps away from some of the areas of the hospital where we perform transplants, so we're really excited to be here today. Dot, one thing to remember is this is Donate Life Month, and so we want to talk about the importance of organ donation and a little bit about our transplant program. So I want to thank you for joining us, Dr. Vagafi. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit, why is organ donation important? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of people waiting for organs, whether it's mm -hmm. um, kidney, liver, heart, lung, pancreas, and um, you know, over 100,000 people are on the wait list. And uh, although we, we are doing record number of transplants throughout the country, uh, we're still not meeting the demand. And so it's important that um, everyone know about organ donation and sign up to be an organ donor. Um, and also consider being a living uh, donor, for, especially for um, patients waiting for kidney or liver transplants. So uh, those are w um, two of the organs that we can transplant with living donors. Okay, so who can be a donor? Are there any restrictions that would prevent somebody from signing up? Yeah, so when you look at living donors, uh, you're talking about people who are very healthy mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, for kidney and liver. Um, and so um, those organs actually do the best ones transplanted because they're coming uh, in large part from very healthy people. So um, there's a pretty rigorous screening process that we do before someone can donate a kidney or part of their liver. Um, and so um, that's um, something that they undergo in terms of an assessment of their lab values, okay. um, assessment of uh, imaging to, to take a look at their organs mm -hmm. and their anatomy. And then um, we have to find if they're a suitable match for the recipient. And so uh, those are all things that we take into consideration, but they have to be healthy. Um, uh, you can have uh, mild uh, medical problems, such okay. as maybe like mild asthma or maybe you're on a cholesterol medication mm -hmm. or you're even on um, one blood pressure medication. Okay. Stuff like that is okay, but uh, overall we look for, for healthy people who live healthy, active lifestyles. Okay. So are there any medical conditions that would prevent somebody from being not a living donor? Um, yeah, there's, you know, if you have um, advanced heart disease okay. um, or advanced lung disease, or if uh, p potentially um, you don't, um, have kidney disease, but you have a strong family history of kidney disease mm -hmm. uh, and you want to donate a kidney, that's something that we have to look at very closely before we proceed. And the same with liver donation. Okay. You know, these are obviously complex operations um, um, that uh, currently we do living donor kidney transplants and we mm -hmm. have just started our living liver uh, program. And so, um, uh, but these are still, um, end of the day, very complex operations. and. Uh, so we have to do a thorough evaluation of the donor and the recipient mm -hmm. uh, before proceeding. So you mentioned you the, the Living Donor Liver Program that started, that we're just starting to get started here. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. What is, what is it? Who is it yeah. for? You know, what have we done so far? So uh, the way that um, liver transplants are done in the, uh, in the United States, the livers from people, from deceased donors, are allocated to patients based on how sick they are. Okay. Um, it's not based upon how long you've been on the list or in the hospital or anything like that. It's really based upon your lab values, which are calculated to create a score, what we call the MELD score, mm -hmm. um, um, and that determines your status on the list. And your score can range from 6 up to 40, 40 being the sickest patient. Um, and so. Uh, people with liver disease um, can be walking around with a MELD score of 6, but all of a sudden they get an infection, they become very sick, um, and their MELD score is 40. And so, and so the organs um, go primarily to the, to the people who have high MELD scores. Gotcha. So, uh, but there's still a lot of people who have liver disease mm -hmm. and um, who perhaps don't have a high MELD score mm -hmm. or have an indication, uh, that another indication for a liver transplant, like um, a type of liver cancer. Uh, and we know that these people still benefit from liver transplant. Mm -hmm. And so living donation uh, for liver transplant is a way to get these people transplanted. So let's say you have liver disease and you have some confusion or you have a lot of fluid accumulation in your abdomen, mm -hmm. um, but your score never gets high enough. Um, through living donation, you can get a liver transplant. And so that, those are the patients that we're uh, hoping to help with mm -hmm. this program. I'm assuming that one of the benefits is that you don't have to take, you don't take the whole liver out, right. you take just a piece. Is that correct? Yes. How does it work? Yeah, so um, with 
liver, the liver is a beautiful organ in the sense that it can regenerate. And mm -hmm. so you're able to take a piece of the liver out and put it into someone, and that piece will grow to meet the, that recipient's need. And also the mm -hmm. donor's liver that's left behind, that piece will also grow to make up for the piece that was taken out. And so, you know, when you think about kidneys, you know, we have two kidneys, so it's easy to right. take, much easier to just take one kidney out and transplant it. Um, for liver, that's what makes it more complex and challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell patients, it's it, like you think about having a townhouse is connected with a shared wall. The liver, uh, each townhouse has its own plumbing and electricity, and that's how the liver is. You know, there's a right side and a left side mm -hmm. that has its own blood vessels and bile ducts, and um, that allows us to k split the liver, um, kind of splitting the townhouse into two homes, and then um, using the plumbing and electricity to one side uh, uh, to implant it into the into the recipient. And so, but those uh, the ability to, of the liver to regenerate is really what makes it possible. Right. Um, so does that mean is it also then possible for an adult to donate part of their liver to a child? Exactly. Right. So. Um, if it's a child, then we'll take the smaller piece, the left side, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a two-story townhouse. And then if we need an ad adult to adult, we'll most often take the right side, which is a little bit of a bigger piece, um, and so uh, and give that to, to another adult. So you can choose depending on the anatomy and also the size of the recipient is important. So oh, no, you can, there aren't it's not often to do an adult to child transplant. So that's that's amazing that can happen. Yeah, that's uh, one of the ways you know that we are able to uh, transplant children is through living uh, liver, mm -hmm. um, uh, because you know often the very small kids it's um, uh, uh, difficult to find uh, a whole organ that will fit, and so a right. piece of an organ is often what's needed. It's fascinating. Yeah. Again, it's, um, uh, it's obviously a very complicated procedure, okay. uh, one that we have a lot of ex expertise to perform here. We have uh, one of the larger liver transplant programs, mm -hmm. and we have uh, significant expertise in living donor liver transplantation. And so um, bringing those two together, uh, as well as our expertise in performing hepatobiliary surgery and complex hepatobiliary surgery, is letting us uh, initiate this program and hopefully help sure. patients get a transplant who need it, but otherwise wouldn't um, qualify based upon either their diagnosis or the fact that their score is just not high enough. Okay, that, that gets a lot to kind of one of our other questions, and that's, you know, why are living donors important? What, yeah. what benefit does that have? Yeah, so, it, you know, it, it really helps people get a transplant um, before they get too sick, right? Okay. We don't want to have to wait necessarily until their MELD score is 40 and they're in mm -hmm. the hospital, in the ICU. Um, and uh, the same for kidney transplant. Um, it's ideal if you can do the transplant uh, when the kidneys have failed, but before they've started dialysis or just yeah. right after they start dialysis. Otherwise, if, if you don't have a living donor for a kidney, you know, we'll work as hard as we can to get you a kidney transplant, but that can take years. Yeah. Um, across the country, it takes years. And so it's ideal if, if um, uh, and, you know, we try to help our patients uh, find a living donor mm -hmm. and, um, and then get a transplant sooner. And okay. we know those organs, again, coming from very healthy people, those organs last the longest. Um, um, so uh, we try to work with our patients um, in, in terms of education and outreach, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, helping them try to find a living donor uh, that's suitable for them. Okay, I haven't heard about living donor and those options for very long. Is that a relatively new thing that we're able to do, a new procedure? Uh, it's not that new uh, mm -hmm. overall. Um, the first successful, actually, kidney transplant in the country done in Boston in, in the 50s was between two identical twin brothers, mm -hmm. um, and the donor went on to live a, a normal life uh, for decades later, and the recipient did at that for that time did very well as well mm -hmm. with that kidney. So. It's, um, it's uh, not a, a new concept, it's definitely grown over time. Mm -hmm. Of the about 20,000 or so kidney transplants we do in this country, about a third of them are from living donors. Mm -hmm. um, but again, at the end of the day, there's still another 80,000 people okay. waiting on the list right. uh, for a kidney transplant. Living liver donation is, is technically more challenging and complex. Um, it's not done as frequently as kidney donation, mm -hmm. uh, living kidney donation in this country, um, although it's increasing over the last couple of years, but it's on the order of, four, last year, 400 living liver donors wow. in the United States. Um, so um, it's definitely growing, but uh, compared to deceased donor liver transplant, mm -hmm. it's, um, 
it makes a small fraction. We do about seven to 8,000 deceased donor liver transplants throughout the country. Wow. Well, I know that so our transplant program here, ET Southwestern, which you oversee, has seen some significant growth in the last year. You know, could you tell us a little bit about where you're seeing the most growth and kind of why, yeah. what's behind it? I think it's a, it's a combination of just really having a great team um, in, in an ideal environment to deliver high level care mm -hmm. um, and high quality care. Um, you know, you can see our surroundings here, this amazing, uh, fairly new hospital that's, it's really been built to, to help, uh, you know, the sickest of patients. Okay. And so when you look across the board at um, whether it's our heart transplant, lung transplant, liver, kidney, or often we're doing combined uh, transplants, lung, liver, heart, liver, mm -hmm. heart, kidney, lung, kidney, these really complex procedures that uh, for us are somewhat routine given the expertise in this hospital. Um, but I think it's just really a culmination of having a really great team across disciplines mm -hmm. um, that's allowed us to grow and attract patients um, mm -hmm. who are in need of, uh, of our expertise. Um, and so I think we're building upon that momentum and um, being able to um, also get out into the community and, um, and recognizing that you know, we're a, our population of patients is, is across a large geographic area, right. out into West Texas or East Texas, even into New Mexico um, and Arkansas. And so um, we recognize that and we're doing our best efforts to help bring our high quality care to those patients in that mm -hmm. area um, through clinics both before and after transplant. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, maintaining the, the critical operation here um, for the actual organ transplant uh, at this mm -hmm. hospital. But I think that as we help deliver care closer to home, uh, I think um, that it benefits the patients uh, a great deal and Absolutely. minimizes the stress and, and challenges associated with um, uh, the close surveillance that's needed after transplant. Absolutely, and I want to get to that, but you know, with the number at the increase, I just want to stress that a successful transplant can really change somebody's life. Yeah, overnight uh, often. You know, we did a, um, uh, Monday we did a kidney transplant um, for a young woman uh, from a living donor. She came in on dialysis uh, and she left three days later off dialysis. And so it can be life changing. And um, uh, you know, we've done two liver transplants this week. Um, and, and those are life changing events, um, especially liver transplant, heart transplant, lung transplant, where the patients are often literally at death's door. And um, you're able to give them a transplant um, and, um, and help them get back to uh, a lifestyle that they, they once knew. Mm -hmm. um, it's not overnight, you know, it's a long process. It takes a very talented and organized team of nurses, surgeons, physicians, um, coordinators, you know, mm -hmm. social workers, pharmacists. Uh, the team is enormous, but they're all here to help get patients through not just the operation, but the long road after the operation at times. And so, um, and w we just uh, have an ideal situation here where we're really able to deliver really high quality care for these patients. That's great. So I, I want to talk a little bit about that life after the transplant, particularly in our living donor situations. Yeah. What does life look like after a transplant for both the donor as well as the recipient? Yeah, uh, the recipients, um, again, you know, it's life changing. The, the living donor kidneys work right away, um, often, most often. And so uh, it really is a matter of uh, either avoiding dialysis or coming off of dialysis for those mm -hmm. patients. Living liver, uh, which we're starting soon, is again, uh, in my past experience, is, is again a um, life-changing event. Mm -hmm. the, the, for the donor, um, a living kidney donor, that operation is done laparoscopically. It's wow. done with cameras. So those patients will go home uh, the following day after donation um, and you know, are back to a, basically um, their baseline health two to four weeks after donating. Mm -hmm. Um, everyone obviously recovers at a little bit different pace. Of course. Um, liver donation is more complex. It's a bigger operation. The length of stay will go up to about five to seven days. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it's a, done with an old-fashioned incision, so it's a little bit more of a recovery. Um, but usually um, about the four to six week period, okay. uh, people are getting back to a baseline level of activity. Uh, you know, I tell people they can start, you know, going back to the gym at that point, biking, running, et cetera. Um, and you got to remember, these are obviously very healthy people going into surgery. Mm -hmm. And so their recovery usually is, is pretty good. Um, and so um, the kidney donors overnight, 
liver, liver donors usually a little bit longer in the hospital, almost a week. Um, but both, again, are, are donating very high quality organs. Right. And so the recipients are really seeing that benefit immediately. Right. Okay. So, you know, related to that, somebody's watching this, somebody knows somebody. I mean, how do you become a donor? What's the process yeah. there? Um, well, anyone can sign up to be a, a donor. You know, we—it's all—it's—it's it's an opportunity. Every time you get your license renewed, um, we have a, a web page um, that can also help you get the process started. Um, and um, there's multiple outlets to do that. And everyone really should consider doing it, um, even if you think you—you you might be not a candidate. Um, you know, there uh, every one donor can donate up to eight di organs to eight different people. And so um, there's. Um, uh, th there always should be consideration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, we had a, a liver donor this past year that was a uh, deceased donor that was 83 years old. And so we're able to use an 83-year-old liver. You know, I think everyone needs to really consider uh, becoming a, an organ donor. And so um, in terms of living donors, um, um, you know, uh, if you know someone uh, who needs uh, um, uh, a kidney or a possibly a liver transplant, we're happy to evaluate any patient. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a blood relative, it can be a okay. friend. Um, and you know, there are opportunities, especially with kidney transplant, where let's say you want to donate to someone and you're not an exact match, we do participate in what we call swaps or paired exchanges where okay. you can possibly donate to someone and uh, that other pair can don have their donor donate to, wow. to your relative or close friend. And so we we have ways of helping get the most people transplanted, mm -hmm. uh, and that's our, our ultimate goal at the end of the day. That's amazing. I know we've done some of those paired transplants yep. here at UT Southwestern. They're always very successful, and it's fascinating just to see the, the generosity yeah. there. So I think that's about all the time we have left. Great. I want to thank you very much for your time, Dr. Vagafi. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. As a reminder, this will be available on our Facebook page. We're also going to share it on our YouTube account, and we'll share information on where that is later today. But in the meantime, it's Donate Life Month. Please go out, sign up to be a donor. We're going to share that the link both in the feed and along the stream, so you can go on and just, it's a really easy process, as Dr. Vakami said. It takes less than three minutes. Thank you for your time. Thank you.